you think is very important for kids to think as ethical computer scientists. So I'm wondering, how do you help kids think ethically? One way is when I get kids together in a group and we're all on the same local area network, sometimes it's fun to write programs like client server programs. So you have, I mean, in today we would have somebody write a web server with maybe uh, Python and Django, for instance, and then um, write a client in some language that connects to that web server and just does, um, I'm sorry if too technical for people who don't do um, HTTP, but doing an HTTP get request to get a page from this student's web server. So then we, the kids are playful and they like to, to, to joke. And so some kid says, well, I'm going to make try to make as many requests against that web server in a period of time as I possibly can. I'm just going to have a loop that goes forever. And essentially doing a, a, a DOS attack, DOS, denial of service, against their friend across the table. And I think that's great as long as they're doing it with the permission of the kid and they would never try to do that in the real world because that, <laughs> you know, it's, it's morally wrong and it can get you in a whole lot of trouble. Once I proposed having a class at a school, like a club called the, um, what did I call it? But it definitely had the word hacking in the name and it was about kind of white hat hacking or computer security or understanding how computer networks work so that you can prevent attacks. And uh, parents who don't understand the subtleties of the, of the issues and the terms were freaked out. No, we were not going to have that at our school. So. Right. Other things like, like obeying copyright and being sensitive to that. Many of us are, think of ourselves as artists or musicians or creators. We're creating something. We should feel free to specify how it's to be used. If I make a piece of art, I should be able to say how, how it can be used. If I want to make it public domain where it has no restrictions, that's, I can do that. And I, and I do that with a lot of my stuff. There are other ways to license, like the Creative Commons licensing. So when my students want to make a game, often they'll just go and search for some images on the web, and I stop them and say, no, you, as it's, it's so convenient to do that, but you can't do that. You've got to think about what that image is and who made it, and did they decide that they want you to use it for that purpose? So I send them to... Um, this may be the wrong link, but search.creativecommons.org, I think, is one way where you can search for sound files and, and graphics that you can have in your game. Like, try to get them to think about what if you were the artist, you were making it, don't you think you should be able to say how it's used? And then giving credit for others' work that you build on. I'm a leader in a group called Hack the Future, and here's this term hack again with the eight different senses or whatever, if you go look it up. In this sense, it's this create, explore, ethical, good, programming, robotics, soldering, entrepreneurialism group. And it's free and the kids meet for a day at some place like the Computer History Museum in, in Mountain View, California, or the Tech Museum of Innovation in San Jose, or Microsoft headquarters. And uh, we have mentors and we usually get about 50 or 70 kids and they're around tables, they're doing these various things. At the end, we have a demo Kids show the programs they wrote and the things that they made, their little robots or their Raspberry Pi stuff. And one kid got up and he showed a program with little kangaroos jumping around or something. And I recognized that program as being one of Al Swigart's programs. And he's a Python educator and he's written some books. So apparently the kid had, had modified Al's program. And without having any ill intent, he gave the impression that it was his own original work. Hmm. So... Here's a situation where uh, you know I can't let this stand. So without embarrassing the kid, I got up and I and I took the mic and I and I and I said how I love how I see the work that you've made to modify Al Swigart's program, and I think it's important that we recognize that your accomplishment here is building on the work of someone else, and that we always recognize someone else's work. Yeah, I think that's a good example of a recommendation that could be given to other educators because there's a lot of computer science standards coming out in. The st different states, and a lot of them have to do with respecting copyright and attributions and things like that. So I think that's a good way to kind of take a potentially negative thing and turn it into a lesson that can be learned by everyone. Mm -hmm. This excerpt was from podcast 17 of the CSK8 podcast, which is titled A Conversation with Professional Programmer and Educator Dave Bracetti. You can listen to the full episode as well as hundreds of more podcast episodes at jaredoleary.com or by simply searching for the CSK8 podcast on your favorite podcast app so you can learn even more about computer science education.